Walking around, feeling free Thinking about what's happened to me from July Up till now, don't know where Hi guys! Welcome back to the channel and more specifically welcome back to another hamster video. I know finally <laughs> I've I haven't been able to make any hamster videos because I've been away um, but I finally got my hamster back and I want to share with you today what I got Misha for Christmas and it is exactly what you see right here. I got her a new bin cage and this one is particularly special because I've been searching for this bin for like 10 months, literally when I first got Misha. Um, and I learned about this type of bin cage from Hamster Hideout, so thank you guys for sharing your wealth of knowledge um, since Christmas is over and they actually have it here where um, I'm finally at. I was, I had to pick it up and I have to show it to you guys. So here it is. Dun dun dun. It's a Christmas tree storage bin. Woo! As you may have seen in my previous cage tours, Misha was living in two very large Samla bin cages I got from Ikea. Those were um, a lot taller. So I provided, I was able to provide her much deeper bedding. Um, however, those lack the length, um, the floor space for her to run, which this actually provides for her. Um, so I'm very happy to see how she likes it. Now the dimensions of this bin cage is 14 inches high, 20 inches wide, and 52 inches long. Um, and it's 164 quart. But uh, in terms of square inches, it is approximately 728 square inches, um, which is obviously a lot larger than the minimum recommended uh, size homes for hamsters. So as you can tell, I've been able to fit a ton of supplies into this bin cage, and I'm really excited because um, she finally has the floor space to just dart across if she wanted to. Um, rather than her previous bin cages which were mostly very tall um, so I gave her a lot of bedding and so she did some burrowing uh, but this will be a nice change of pace for her to run across crawl and climb and jump out of so I'm really excited to show you guys what she lives in now so let's get down to the cage tour we'll start from the right side um, we have two wheels here. I'm very excited to be able to finally provide her two different types of wheel. We have the saucer uh, flying dish here that I got from PetSmart, um, which, you know, is very open. And she, I don't have to worry about her arcing her back when she's running. And then beside that, I have the silent spinner here, um, which she uses. Uh, however, I don't think she prefers that as much as she does the saucer. Um, she seems to run on this one more, but the fact that um, I can provide her both options uh, is very is very awesome, I think, and that way she has a choice. Now moving on to the opposite corner of her bin cage here, I try to make this corner a little bit more interesting uh, by using uh, the layering uh, effect, and I'll show you what I mean. You can probably get a better view here. Um, the green tube, it's one of those, I forgot what the brand name is called, but it is one of those bendable, retractable, and stretchy tube. And it goes here, there's one entrance, and it goes under the bedding and back out the other end here so she can kind of climb, tunnel through if she wanted to. I thought that was kind of fun. And then down here, I have my DIY coconut hidey hole. Um, this is just another corner where she can run into uh, if she wants to eat a snack or whatever. And uh, I made this a few months ago uh, from this coconut I bought from the supermarket, uh, which saved me like $12 at least, so that was really nice. Above that, we have one of those Petco, uh, I think they're called Benda Bridges. And I've just kind of created an overarching walkway. Um, and in doing so, I have another tunneling area right down there to the right, um, which she can go through to the other side. 
And next to that is her Seagrass Hideaway. I'm sorry guys, I completely forgot all the brand names, but I got this from PetSmart. Um, and she actually really enjoys chewing on this thing, as I've shown on my previous cage tour. And it's still, you know, able to hold its shape up, uh, but it's starting to need some help, so I might need to get her another one soon. Now, moving along on the top is one of those, um, I don't know what this is called, shoot. But it is a chew toy, and it com comes in this kind of a coconut type um, bowl and it's filled with these loofah chews um, there were some green ones in there um, but this was filled and there was two little sticks in here um, the last time I got this for her she really enjoyed chewing on it and what I like to do is hide some seeds in here so she likes to uh, dig through this and look for some treats so it's kind of a fun and interesting toy all right, back down here is her food dish, and I went with the terracotta type dish. Um, they're really inexpensive, but they also look really good with the natural themed cages. Back down to this end of the cage, I have uh, several varieties of chews for her. Um, I have the peanut carrots and the veggies. When I first got this for her, she really loved the celery for some reason. She went for uh, all the green ones, so maybe that's her favorite color. But I also have these uh, rope type carrot chews. And then along this corner are some willow sticks, um, which she sometimes chews on, but I use them more for decoration um, and toys, really. Oh, and one thing I almost forgot to mention is this right here. That whole, this whole thing is a actually a huge block of cardboard. Um, it's a, I think it's called the National Geographic Wall Hideaway, but it's this block of um, cardboard and it's got holes in it. And I'll show you here. So here um, you can see that there's actually three other holes. Um, so basically she can tunnel through the inside of the cardboard, but uh, it provided a nice stand for the wheel. And um, she does kind of go through here. There's also another exit, so she goes through here and out this way. So we'll move along to this side of the cage now. All right, so you can tell from where she comes out of uh, that hole, it'll go through here. And uh, I basically have a large driftwood here and uh, she can actually go under here and uh, out this way or down that way if she wanted to. Here I wanted to show you, um, let's take this off for a second kind of pull this up and so you can tell like she has another walkway a little underground area there um, which is fun put this back on top all right so moving on to the opposite side of the cage here is um, we'll start here this is a piece of corn it's a chew for her if she wants to use it um, she hasn't seemed to take into it but it's there and this is a rock that I picked up from one of our hikes from last summer and on top of that is her impossible to crack walnut. I think I should just take a hammer to it and give it a start because uh, she's kind of given up on that. But it's there. <laughs> and then this is another wooden chew toy which she doesn't really use. And here we have some foxtail millet. Um, and once again we have another Petco Bender Bridge that I've created an archway. Uh, and this creates an extra little tunnel area right there which she likes to go under and through through this wicker tunnel. Um, so here is her wicker tunnel, which she's also been chewing on. And here we have another Petco Benda Bridge, and I'm using this one as a fence. I really like the effect of um, putting plants behind the fences because it kind of gives it that, you know, home feel like you're in your backyard and you're looking over your fence. Um, so that's why that's there. And moving downward um, is another piece of tunneling wood. I got this from the um, oh the reptile section, and it was actually way too small. This is one of the first things I bought when I got my hamster, so it's just kind of here as a added decoration or a little obstacle. Um, and then oh, here's another chew toy. This is a wicker ball, and actually these are really fun. Um, because you can stick seeds and treats in there and uh, and it kind of, I mean if your hamster doesn't chew on these anyway, this gives them incentive to chew on it. Um, and one thing I 
did before was put one of those wicker stems, those wicker sticks, and I'll shove it in here with the treat inside and then stick this on top of a sand pit and she'll uh, have a ball <laughs> trying to get the treats out and it's kind of fun to watch too. Uh, now let's move to the other end, the other side of the bin cage. Okay, here we are. Uh, and there is her water bottle on this end and uh, with a stone underneath. Now, even though I do her big clean uh, once a month, um, not the spot cleaning, just the big clean, and where I redecorate her bin cage, I do like to keep things that are familiar. So one, one of the things that I do is keep the water bottle, I'll pair the water bottle up with this rock, um, and they stay together because for one thing, um, if the if the water drips, it'll land on the rock and it'll evaporate as opposed to being absorbed by the bedding, which if I don't notice it, if I don't catch it right away, then I don't want mold to start growing. Um, so that's one of the benefits, but the other thing is that, you know, if she knows that she's on this rock, that the water is nearby, so I don't know. I think having some familiar familiarity is important, um, especially when we're changing up the hamster's environment. And then here we have some other uh, chew toys here. Um, I have this willow stick ring. Here's one of those grass balls. I was putting treats in here and then hiding it. Um, you can actually pull this out and put treats in, but I can't show it to you because I'm filming with one hand. <laughs> um, but she's, I was hoping that she would be able to chew through the straw since she liked to truth, chew through that straw. Um, but it might be, it might be too big for dwarves. That might be more suitable for Syrians. All right, moving on. Finally, at the opposite end of the bin cage, um, here we have her sand pit. Uh, this is one of those Christmas melamine bowls <laughs> that I got for like a couple of bucks. And I think she really likes this shape. Um, I've had a couple of sand bowls before. So I had a square one and then a much smaller circular one. Um, because she seems to like to go up against the walls and then do her flip <laughs> when she takes her sand bath and this one definitely has a lot more space for her to do that so I think I'm gonna stick with um, larger circular bowls to hold her sand bath all right now moving on to her house dun 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 this thing is massive it's like a massive tree house so what we've done is taken two driftwood and stacked them on top of each other and then as a roof um, I've taken the uh, this is the medium size I think Nat Geo um, Bender Bridge and I've created a roof on top um, we've noticed that she likes to have overhead protection so um, kind of created this for her um, and then it's kind of leaning on top of a wooden hideaway right there this is another Nat Geo wooden hideaway, um, and that's currently her food storage. So I'm gonna pop this open, and I'm gonna show you her home. So, as I said, there's that Nat Geo uh, wooden hideaway, and she's using it as her food storage. Uh, that right there is her alligator, Whimsy, which she adores. And then, I'm gonna show you, she's actually living underground. It might be hard for you to see because it's kind of dark, but uh, down there, up against the stump there is a hole. That's the entrance tunnel to her home. And I'm gonna zoom out here and this whole corner here is a mountain of bedding in which she's tunneled under from there and she's down there somewhere. You can't see her. You can't see the little nugget from the side, but she's in there. So that's where she sleeps. Um, and I'm really glad that she has chosen to make that a corner her home. It's really cute. But we're gonna go ahead and pop the roof back on top. And it also, there's another platform, she'll climb up here sometimes um, and I'll give her, her her little peanut butter Cheerio treat. So there you have it, this is her bin cage. Um, it's a little messy because she 
went partying for, for New Year's last night. Um, so <laughs> that's, and I haven't cleaned up her mess, but you know, it is what it is. Oh, and I forgot to mention, uh, so I have oat sprays here. Um, we have a foxtail millet there. And she's taken all, she's foraged all the rye. I haven't been able to pick up more of that. Um, but I think I have one left. There it is. The one rye. It's partially foraged. Uh, the plants there, they are safe for hamsters. Um, I don't think she really eats them. Um, she tried eating the millet from the foxtail, but, uh, and she's, you know, forged these before. Um, but they're really just there to provide her another option of for activities. Um, you know, hamsters like to forage and travel and explore in their waking hours. So I like to just you know, as with the chews, I just like to provide her, you know, choices. And aesthetically, it looks really, really nice. Um, it just adds a really, I don't know, happy feeling <laughs> to her cage. So far though, she seems to be really enjoying it. She's been living in this home for about two weeks now. And uh, I noticed her mood right away was very happy and excited because she was exploring every nook and corner, every crevice. She liked to tunnel under and climb up on things. And um, she seemed like she was just having so much fun. There we have it guys. This is Misha's 2015 winter cage tour or Christmas cage tour, I suppose. <laughs> well, there was more white uh, Katie bedding sprinkled everywhere um, to give it that snowy effect, but she's kind of hoarded it all and probably took it back into her bedding. Thank you guys so much for checking out Misha's cage tour. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you have any comments or concerns or anything, feel free to uh, just chat me down below and I will reply back to you. And until then, Happy New Year's, guys. Take care and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.